Hey guys, all content discussed is due diligence gathered with aim at better understanding the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Let's dive in. This video you are about to watch came out last year. It goes over an anonymous confession from a verified market maker. He goes on to describe in detail how it is that they manipulate the system and talks about what we as retail investors can do to stop them. I hope this video finds your well as I am unable to make new content for the week. Even still, this video is more relevant now than ever, so I hope you guys enjoy. An anonymous user made a post, in which he advocated and confessed to how exactly market makers engage in trades, and why it is essentially impossible to beat them. Now, before you start getting your first round of anxiety, let me clarify. What I mean when I say it's impossible to beat them is in reference to day trading, not investing which is what GameStop and AMC shareholders are doing. The post begins with the author saying that he was an over-the-counter market maker for around 10 years during the late 80s. The first and one of the most important things he says is that by and large most market makers don't have a clue nor do they care to learn about the fundamentals of the stocks they trade. Instead, they try to make orderly markets. He then proceeds to state and I quote, contrary to popular opinion, big firms do not necessarily go to the low offer to fill a buy order or high bid for a sell for you smooth brain operators. Instead, they go to who they think will perform the fill order and expect that market maker to match the low offer in the case of a buy. Even though this market maker might in fact be the high bid and not really want to sell anymore. As a wholesaler, he must perform or he will get a reputation as a non-performer with the big houses and will cease getting calls which means he will soon go out of business. I mentioned above that this activity is very significant to stocks. This is because most of the trades in a certain type of stock, say a penny stock being traded, will be unsolicited and are done through discount houses. What this wrinkled-brained individual is saying is that essentially, the nature of the business of trading is done through the understanding that if one wholesaler does not agree to perform a type of nefarious, legally or generally risky and dubious trade, he will soon find himself without clients. People will label him as not a good pal and will simply move on to someone whose self-righteous moral code is a bit more flexible. The nature of the business manifests and promotes psychopathic behavior. This is something we see depicted very well in the famous movie The Wolf of Wall Street, where the protagonist begins as a newbie good-hearted guy at Wall Street and then slowly becomes corrupted to the core. So back to the post, the unknown ex-market maker then decided to give us some real insight into how market makers get shorts even if they like the company they are about to screw over. He goes to say and I quote, let's say that a stock has been lying quietly at a 25 cent bid and a 50 cent offer. A limit order comes into one for the market makers to buy at the ask which is 50 cents. Prior to this trade, that same market maker may be flat, which means it has neither a long nor a short on any of the shares. So, the market maker fills the order and is now short 1000 shares. He may raise his bid hoping to find a seller to flatten out his positions, but then before he realizes it, a wave of buyers have come in and cleared out all the 50 cent offers. Now that stock has a 50 cent bid with an ask of 75 cents. Here comes that big firm that he just sold the 1,000 shares to at 50 cents with another bid for 1,000 at 75 shares. He then makes his print, and now he is short 2,000 at an average of say 62 cents. The market keeps moving and now it's a 75 cent bid with a $1 ask. This man now has to make a decision. Just like investors, market makers hate to take losses. It means less hub subscriptions. So, 9 times R of 10. This man will now sell 2,000 shares at $1 making him short 4,000 but with an average of 81 cents. At this time, he would love to see a seller at 75 cents so he can cover his short and make a few bucks. But instead, the market keeps moving up. Now, the bid is at $1 and the ask at $1.25. He doesn't want to lose the call so he needs to sell 4,000 shares at $1.25 to keep his break even point above the bid. Now he is short 8,000. The market keeps moving up the big to 1.25 and the ask to 1.50, so the buyer now feels he must sell 8,000 here because stocks don't go up forever. Now he is short 16,000. This process keeps going, and as long as the stock keeps moving up, his short position will increase. So finally, the market's close for the day and on paper he may look alright in that his breakeven price may be around the closing price. But now he has to figure out how to entice sellers so he can cover his short position. It is important to note that if this happened to one market maker, is has probably happened to most of them. 
Some of the ways market makers entice sellers is to run the stock up with a tight spread in a fast market, then open up the spread to slow down the buying interest. After it has cooled off for a little while, then they lower the ask price below the last trade right after a small piece trade on the offer and then tighten the spread so that the sellers feel they can take a quick profit by hitting the bid on the tight spread. Once the selling starts, the market maker will walk it down quickly by only making small prints on the way down with a tight spread. Another way is by running the stock up in the morning, averaging up their short, and then use the technique we just discussed to walk it down in the afternoon. After doing this for a couple of days, they will hopefully demoralize the buyers. The volume will dry up and the sellers will materialize thinking that the game is over. Contrary to popular opining, market makers usually do not cover in fast-moving markets either up or down if they are short. They short more and more. They usually try to cover after the frenzy is out of the market. There are many other techniques they use but these are the most popular. This technique works about 9 times out of 10 for small penny stocks. However, this is due in large part because most penny stocks are crap. Remember, most marker makers don't have a clue as to the value of the company nor do they care to study the fundamentals of the stocks they trade like this until they get trapped. If the company has a solid fundamental and a bright future, and the stock does very well, then the activity and result that all of this caused will prove to help the future stock activity of such said company by creating an audience for it. Our ex-market maker then goes on to teach us the second lesson, which focuses on market makers' operating procedures. Long-term investors never chase stocks up. For the most part, this is done by momentum players and day traders. Smart investors using simple strategies in order to position themselves. One is to find a stock no one immediately sees has huge potential and start accumulating. Long-term smart investors are not interested in trading against the public mind. That's where the majority of the money can be made but even more can be made if the base of the stock is held extremely strong by investors. Another is to not doubt the research and have a strong understanding of the basis for going long and holding. This means knowing the fundamentals of the company, looking at performance reports, looking and evaluating management, and paying close attention to future catalysts. Keep this in mind guys, because this is how winners in the market make their money. Now, our beloved anonymous ex-market maker then explains that market makers follow a simple code of business when making a market in a stock that is over the counter. They look for the level that stocks will seek that tend to yield the most volume. This is important because they make money on the volume buying at the bid and selling at the ask. To increase profitability, they make the spread as great as possible on as many shares as they can, especially if the volume falls off. When they have mostly all buy orders, that's not the price that's going to yield the most volume. They need both buy and sells to get the maximum action. Remember, market makers play the volume. That is their focus, they need as many people engaged trading that particular stock. By making the market, they are buying low and selling high. To increase their profitability, they make the spread as great as possible on as many shares as they can, especially if the volume falls off. When they have mostly all buy orders, that's not the price that's going to yield the most volume. They need both buys and sells to get the maximum action. Remember, market makers play the volume, and if the volume decreases and there are mostly buys, that becomes a one-way volume. So, what they do is let that stock run up to a price where it runs out of steam. They fill all the buy orders there that they can and then comes the pullback one way or another, whether it's natural or purposely induced. During the pullback, they can buy tons of shares and flip them to those averaging down or trying to catch the bounce. At some point, the stock will be relatively stable and yield the most volume. This brings about the average price for the stock, which is the point where a stock seeks a level where the market maker can profit on the most volume. So, during the day, that is the price that market makers and momentum day traders want to see the stock at. Why? Because they know the public and dumb money was chasing the price thing up. Most of the time, the market makers love a flurry of market orders which is a dead sign of an artificial run or momentum. Merely is money in the bank for them, because most get hung in the momentum and the tactics of market makers, who are in the business of taking and robing through pure manipulation from the public at every single chance they get. How do they get away with this? Because they cover under the guise that they are merely making the market liquid. Market makers have created an added complication of the already volatile intraday price movements caused by momentum and day traders. Market makers cannot relate to long-term holders in the over-the-counter stocks for companies that aren't that big or important overall. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. 
They feel a large percentage of traces in the over-the-counter crappy stocks which consists of short terms or day trades. Market makers merely view the barrage of buys and sells as relatively neutral to the market. How they figure this is that when the average day trader without much knowledge of how markets or even day trading works buys shares in a company, the market makers feel or rather know with some certainty it is very likely that they will want to sell back those shares relatively quick on the slightest drop. They have all this figured out by having access to all the data in the world as to how the psychology of people make them vulnerable. Now, somewhat a comfortable logic follows in that market makers merely short sell into the buying and attempt to take the stock down in an effort to shake out weak hands, or paper hands as we know it better. Since it is difficult to know for sure whether a move is the beginning of a trend, or a routine shakeout, this type of deception works quite well for the market makers. What the long-termers do to a stock is surprise the market makers because instead of falling, the shorting has no effect and the price goes up instead, as we have seen. This puts the market makers at selling low through shorting and this having to buy high in order to cover. This is when this anonymous poster then goes to give us some juicy content. He says when this happens, the market makers are not very happy campers. The investors and traders are supposed to be doing that, not them. It then becomes time to pull out every trick and tactic in the book in order to attempt to get a bear raid at every dollar mark or percent from where the stock started. Market makers give you a chance to make a small amount of money for your momentum and day trading style by shorting it at these levels and trying to get a bear raid each time. Each failure is compounding the market makers short positions so they let it go to the next level. Now will come the more deliberate tactics market makers use to coerce bear raids or panic selling. Once market makers are caught short and the strength of the buy is overpowering, the market maker will want to cover his short position. So they call their friendly hedge funds and fellow market makers and say something like the weather is sure rough today. The market makers now along with their friends will initiate a down tick about the same time. I bet you guys, if you have followed my channel or the situation with the GME and AMC dips and manipulation, know that the list of stuff they can and frequently do is large. However, the problem is that they have long-term investors in the stocks. The author says that market makers will aggressively deny any sort of collusion designed to fix quotes and spreads, but recent SEC investigations tell another story. Market makers have a vast resource of tactics and it would take probably more than a lifetime to figure them all out. So how do investors somehow manage to overcome the obvious deception? The author says that one answer lies in the indirection of trading styles by going long on positions, which is exactly what we have done with meme stocks. In this way between investors and public companies, long-term investors will find the most effective way to be to start accumulating and holding, thus drawing the market makers out of its defenses, making them as naked as their short positions. This is a way so this is slow accumulation and holding for the long term easily achieves the desired effect to force market makers to cover and knock off the tactics or bury themselves even deeper, which is exactly what has been happening. The inherent power position of market makers is that they can move the markets at any time up or down. The only way to draw them out of their favorable positions is by going long on stocks and keep accumulating. I have another interesting video for tomorrow morning as well, this one being a partial proceeding of an SEC investigation into insider trading. And that concludes this video. Thank you all for tuning in. Join the Discord linked in the description for more content and a huge community of meme investors. Keep on holding and to the moon.